Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape version 1.3 to create a seamless pattern. I'll be using basic shapes, the node tool, clip groups and gradients. I start with a square and set the dimensions for the square. In this case, 250 by 250 pixels. The size does not really matter, seeing we're working with scalable vectors. What is important is that I take the same size for the steps. The keys move by the exact same amount, 250 pixels, whenever I use the arrow keys. When I duplicate the square now and move it with the arrow keys, it is moved by exactly 250 pixels. I turn the rectangle into a clip group and create a clone of this group. I position the clone, duplicate it to make a 3x3 three three grid. Seeing this is just my preview and I can't work in the clones, I can scale it to match the size of my square so I can easily see everything on the screen at the same time. I lock the clones so I don't accidentally move them and then work inside the clip group. I create a rectangle, place it inside the group and you can see it shows up in my preview. If I move it with the arrow key it's being placed exactly 250 pixels to the right. I don't want to work with rectangles. For this one I prefer to work with more editable lines. I create a straight line with the pen tool, assign the widths, create a few duplicates and alter their stroke widths. Unlike a clip or a mask, the clip group has an own fill. I can change that to be less saturated and then adjust the black lines. Seeing Inkscape inherits the properties from one object to the next. The lines have a black fill, so I select all lines and set them to no fill. And then use the node tool and curve the lines, making sure that the top and bottom nodes are kept in place to ensure that seamless tiling. I can cross between two lines as long as I make sure that the nodes at the edge connect. I duplicate flip and mirror and change the colors in order to create a more complex looking set of vines. Starting with a circle converted to a pass and modified with the node tool, I can easily create a leaf. To make it visually more interesting, I create a few variations of this leaf. They look a little too bland and will make it hard to connect in a cluster, so I add a little bit of a stem to them using the node tool, creating extra nodes and dragging them out. I then place them in the pattern and arrange them in a cluster that I can mirror, rotate, scale and quickly and easily reuse with minor variations in the design. Elements placed on the edge need a copy on the opposite side, so I group this cluster of leaves, duplicate it, move it with the arrow keys so it's set perfectly 250 pixels away. Objects in the corners will be cut at the top and the bottom as well as the sides, so you need three more duplicates in the other three corners to keep the pattern seamless. The same applies to the horizontal vines. The left and right side need to match. I just duplicate one of the vines I use vertically, rotate it 90 degrees, adjust the color, adjust the stroke widths and use the node tool to curve them. With a pattern as complex as a jungle, I can just hide the ends of those lines in the foliage or among the lines that I already have on the screen. To add some decoration, I use the pen tool, create a simple zigzag shape, turn off the stroke and give it a color that matches the vines to create some hanging moss. 
I duplicate that, go in with the node tool and alter it slightly and reuse it. Even though I've already put on quite a few elements, it's still tiling nicely. There are some empty spaces, so I move one of the horizontal vines further down. Moving the curve outside the clipping mask means I need to make a copy and place it at the top. Starting with the circle, I create a, another leaf modified with the node tool and add some smaller shapes. I turn the circle into a pass and modify it with the node tool. I duplicate the smaller shape and place the copies along the edge of the larger leaf. These will be combined using the Pass union, I duplicate the combined shape, mirror it, place it on the other side of the leaf, combine the two with pass union and then select the leaf and cut them out with the pass difference. I do the same thing with a couple of circles, cut them out with the pass difference and have my second leaf that I can now place, rotate, skew, scale and use to fill some of the empty areas. Variation is key. I use one of the existing smaller leaves, cut some circles out of that one and have a distinctly new shape. I can place that along with the larger leaf that I just created. Slowly but surely the pattern is filling up. Let's organize the design a little. When you work on a project with that many layers, it makes sense to structure the design a little bit. I add new layers in the layer panel. All the leaves go on a background layer. I create a new layer for the color, for the detail, and for the lights I intend to add. I select the color layer, add a rectangle, give that a lighter color and a blur, duplicate and scale it a few times, and then add a gradient that goes from opaque to transparent to opaque again. With the two transparent stops in the middle of the gradient, I can adjust the size of the gap and the position while still keeping the gradient seamless. Using the same light yellow, I create a circle, blur it, set the blend mode to overlay to mix with the colors below. I add more lights to the background. Except I didn't look at the layer panel, did I? And I'm placing them on top of everything. Once I'm done placing, I need to select all those circles, cut them and paste them in the color layer to position them in the right place. I add a few more and of course I'm placing them at the very top, which happens easily because Inkscape places duplicates at the top rather than above the element you duplicate. Looking at the preview, it's starting to come together. I don't like the dark color of the bigger leaves, so I give those leaves a gradient, trying to reuse the same gradient for all of them to keep my colors consistent. Next, I want to add some flowers. I place a circle on the layer above the background. I move the origin of the petal shape, duplicate and rotate before going in with the node tool and shaping each petal individually. When adding detail to your design, make sure it will be visible. Working with scalable vectors, it's easy to zoom in and zoom in further. Keep the target dimensions in mind before adding too much detail. Now I place my flowers and seeing they're outside the clip group, they are not in the preview until I place them in the right layer. 
I add the next plant using the pen tool to draw a diamond shape and then modify it with the node tool to create my leaf. I give it a gradient. I adjust the colors of the gradient to give me a wider range from the very light to the very dark. That way I can shade my objects by simply moving the gradient. The leaf in the back shares the same gradient, but I moved the start and end position of the gradient. I add a straight line with a pen tool, adjust the stroke color and the width and make it a pass effect tapered stroke. I use circles for the highlights, color them and group the whole design. Duplicate it, flip it, rotate it, and give it just enough variation to not look repetitive, keeping a copy on the opposite side if they overlap, and then put it inside my clip group. I zoom out to make sure it still tiles properly. I feel like I need an additional element that can fill gaps vertically, so I create a vine shaped plant, starting with a line giving it a stroke, adding a gradient, using the simple circles to add color, group the whole thing and move it into other spots, change it slightly, again making sure that I have copies on both the top and the bottom once they overlap. I select all five groups and move them into the clip mask, placing the plants I created prior on top to make sure the layering is okay. I zoom out and even in the video you probably can see the white lines. Placing a green square below hides them quite well. At this stage I copy the clip group, paste it in a new document and make it a pattern via object pattern object to pattern. In the layer panel it changes from a group to a rectangle. I select the green background I created earlier and assign a pattern fill. It shows the design as a recent fill. I can adjust the scale. By default the X and Y scale are locked. I hide the rectangle that is the pattern and have a seamless fill. For this scene I created a black overlay using elements from the pattern. I added a few light beams which are just deformed rectangles with a blur and a gradient as well as color overlays that use different blend modes to mix with the seamless pattern below. The big advantage of the pattern fill is the ease in which I can edit it. I can change the scaling, I can change the angle, I can change the origin of my pattern with just a few clicks. I can also add additional elements on top of my seamless pattern like the black overlay or the light and color effects in this scene. Make sure to keep an editable version of your design. Don't convert it to a pattern without having a duplicate of the editable version. Otherwise it might be a little harder to regain the design and the structure. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and let me know what you want to see on my channel and I will see you again soon.